This video is sponsored by Skillshare. One, two, four, eight, 16. What comes next? Exactly, the answer is 31. Now I'll explain that soon, but before that I wanna go over something known as the Kolatz conjecture, which is an unsolved problem in mathematics that honestly drives me crazy. Not because I could solve it or anything, but it's something anyone can understand and it just seems like someone should have solved it by now. But apparently it's a very difficult problem and it goes like this. You pick a positive integer. If it's even, you divide it by two, and if it's odd, you multiply by three and add one. And you just keep doing this with each new number. So let's start at 10. It's even, so we divide by two and get five. Then we apply the rule again. Five is odd, so we multiply by three and add one to get 16. 16 is even, so we divide by two. Eight is even, so again divide by two. Then again, and one more time. Now we're at one, which is odd, so we now multiply by three and add one, which gets us four. Then divide by two, divide again, and we get stuck in this loop. So now let's try starting at 24. Using the same rules, we then get 12, six, three, 10, five, 16, eight, four, two, one, and that cycle just repeats. No one knows whether this will happen for every single number, but so far the sequence has reached one for every single number tested, and we've tried things past 10 to the 18th. So this is a question that I like to bring up to students because it's something anyone can understand, but when I tell people how it works and how it's unsolved, the common response I get is, well, can't we just assume it's true if we've tried that many numbers and it works for all of them? And the answer is definitely no. I mean, just tell that to this integral here. The answer to this is pi over two. But if we had another term of basically the same thing with 201 instead of 101, the answer is still pi over two. If we had another term of 301, then we still get pi over two. It's not until you repeat the sequence about 10 to the 43 times that the pattern is finally broken. Once you pass 7.4 times 10 to the 43, you will never get pi over two again. Sorry, that's just the weirdest thing to me, like 10 to the 43rd. If I were to stack 10 to the 43 pieces of paper right here and gotten a rocket that could go the speed of light, the time it would take to reach the top of the stack would be over a trillion times longer than how long the universe has existed. I just really wanted to put that number in perspective. Moving on, let's take a circle and put a single dot on it. Kind of a stupid question here, but how many regions did this divide the middle into? Well, just one, it's just the entire inside. But let's add another dot and connect them with a line. Now how many regions do we have? Obviously two this time. And now let's add a third dot and connect everything. Yes, we're making sure every single dot is connected. So now we have four regions. If we add another dot, we get eight regions. And then add a fifth dot and it will get us 16 regions. You'd think the next dot would make 32 regions, right? Well, in fact, adding a sixth dot leaves us with 31 regions, and thus the pattern is broken. Although this looked like it was going to be a two to the n equation, it is in fact this. Plug in the number of dots you have on the circle in for n, and it will spit out the amount of regions that the circle is divided into. And you'll see if you were to plug in one, two, three, four, or five, then you get the same answers as just an exponential function with those same inputs, which is probably what you thought the equation was going to be. Or here's the start of another integral pattern that doesn't break quite as far down the line as this other one did, but the error is interesting. This integral also equals pi over two. If we had another term with sine of x over five over x over five, it still equals pi over two, and the same with x over seven. If we continue the pattern, it fails at x over 15, in which the answer is pi over two minus 2.31 times 10 to the minus 11. So the pattern breaks, but by such a small amount. And for anyone who wants the proofs to these, I'll provide links below because they are pretty involved, but hopefully you're seeing the moral of the story. Another example has to do with the greatest common divisor of this number and this number, where n is any positive integer. If you were to try a bunch of values for n, it would seem like the greatest common divisor would always be one. When n is one, you get 10 and this bigger number, and the only thing that goes into both of them evenly is one. For n equals two, you'd see the same thing. 
In fact, if you made a program that would test every integer starting at one, going up, and let it run for the rest of your life, you'd never come across anything where the greatest common divisor is not one. And that's because the first counterexample is this. These numbers you're seeing don't necessarily have any significant meaning beyond these patterns, but it's still crazy how you can't just assume anything really. And I left this one for later because it's very well known, but if you look at the polynomial n squared plus n plus 41, it seems like any integer value for n will yield a prime number. If you plug in 1, you get 43, which is prime. Plug in 2, and you get 47, which is also prime. You plug in 30, and you get 971, also prime. So it seems like we maybe found a simple polynomial to locate primes. But if you plug in 40, you get 1681, which is not prime. It's actually 41 squared. And you don't need a calculator to see that if you plug in 41 for n, it's definitely not prime since it's divisible by, well, 41. If you guys have seen the movie The Man Who Knew Infinity, which I highly recommend if you haven't, you'll remember that the main character Ramanujan becomes irritated that he's forced to learn proofs. This is something that he didn't have formal training with, and being extremely gifted, he was confident in the theorems that he found without proving them. But there's one scene where his advisor finds an error in his work that comes as a result of him not providing a proof. So hopefully you're seeing that no matter who you are, mathematicians require proofs before they'll believe anything. And I hope this video is kind of showing you why that is. This really applies to pure mathematics more than anything, but I still thought the patterns we saw here were really interesting in that anyone can understand them, but it highlights that you can't make any assumptions too early. And before I end this, I just want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 25,000 classes for anyone wanting to learn more about a wide variety of topics from data science or blockchain to web development or Photoshop and much more. As an engineering student who frequently had trouble thinking of project ideas, courses like Introduction to the Arduino serve as a perfect solution which explain how to get started from the beginning, but then go on to talk about how to make real interactive projects that you can use at school or to just get ahead for the next semester on learning a new topic. And for those with experience, you can even get more specific and learn how to make an obstacle avoiding robot, an ultrasonic sensor alarm, and much more. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning throughout 2019. Skillshare annual subscriptions cost less than $10 per month and give you unlimited access to all classes. And additionally, the first 500 people to use the link in the description will get a two month free trial. And with that, I'm gonna end that video there. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join the MedProp Facebook group for updates on everything. And I'll see you all in the next video.